Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Today, we are going to cover the company Magna. Now, shout out to Bassomatic because he's the one that um, has constantly told us about this company and we decided that you know what let's cover it seeing that we are live right now this is being recorded live and um pce got pushed to 10 o'clock so we're literally just sitting here just doing nothing so may as well just cover magna just so that way the stream gets it and the people who weren't able to come to the stream they'll be able to see it at four o'clock so we're going to cover this company right now and you guys can see mike is here so he will be putting in his um technical analysis as well when it comes to magna so the video might be a little bit long but Regardless, it's Thanksgiving. You guys got something to watch. So, yeah. With that said, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. really does help over the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on XFL. On the Discord, which is the best place to catch the live streams, which we're live right now. The live streams, the videos, as well as the shorts, which we do need to do a lot more, Mike. Um, that is the best place to catch them because it'll alert you automatically. So, Make sure to join us there. And we do eventually pop in here and there. We have conversation with people. And there's just a lot of people that have, you know, a lot more knowledge combined than both of us. So are you pointing at something? Okay. <laughs> so guys, again, smash the like button and let's get started with the company Magna. Now, Magna, very interesting company. It is uh, it designs, engineers, and manufactures components, assembly systems, subsystems, and modules for original equipment man manufacturers (OEMs) of vehicles and light trucks worldwide. So, right then, there kind of kind of uh, interesting the fact that um, you know it's just something that you think about, right? It's people when when they think about cars, they think of like engines, they think of like you know all this other stuff, that, like the stuff that goes into the engines or the, the parts that go into the, in the car, not necessarily. The interior right so i like it i really do like it it's it's very unique now they are based in canada and um you know they're, they're not they're not a new company they're a pretty decently old company but the fact that they're based in canada shows a little bit of a red flag i guess you could say because of the fact that well trump's talking about tariffs right a 25 percent on tariff 25 percent tariffs on canada now this could happen this may not happen depending on if canada folds or not hopefully they fold maybe this doesn't happen but right now the stock is uh not doing too hot as of yesterday as of uh, november 26 5.21 percent down on the day yes right now pre-market you guys can see that this is up 1.02 percent but Overall, on the one year, this thing is down 18.81%. Year to date, it is down 25.5%. We are not near the 52-week low, but we're like slightly off the middle off of this 52-week range. 52-week low of $38 and a penny with a 52-week high of $60.32. Mike, do you have anything to add here? Uh, it kind of formed a little bit of a bottom if you look at it historically. Um, like on what graph? Uh, on what if chart? you look at like the daily right like you're down 52 percent from all-time highs on okay. the on the stock but it was one of those like covid bubble companies almost like really? where it has a straight line going up to uh, through covid right 21 to 20 to 21 right just straight line up and then I basically came back yep. to the, almost like the same evaluation back to normal kind of yep. low now I, I would i would say it's an interesting point right now especially kind of looking maybe like it formed a bottom no, you're actually, I, I did, did not realize that this was a COVID hype company. It, it really, really was. May 31st hit peak at $103. I don't know if you can get a much more accurate number, but at least on my end, I'm getting $103.74. Um, yeah, this is, you know what, you know what this is looking like? This is looking like a Generac with less. Peak was 104 dollars 104 Got it. Got it. Got it. But yeah, this is looking almost like a Generac in a way. It really is. Um, so yeah, I look at this. What's up? Yeah, you can find a lot of companies that are like that going into COVID. Yep, yep, yep. And in fact, if we take a look at the max, uh, yeah, guys, ever since 10 years ago, we're still at roughly the same spot as we were back in August of 2014. So talk about just, oof, talk about just a massive roller coaster when it comes to this thing. Um, might present itself as a great buying opportunity. We'll see. We'll take a look at the fundamentals in just one second. But taking a look at the at the overall earnings we could see that well they did have earnings on october 31st 
EPS came coming in at $1.28, missed by 12 cents. EPS gap actual, $1.68, that was a beat by 31 cents. And the revenue of $10.28 billion misses by $107.83 million. Next, next earnings will be on October 7th, a day after my birthday. And they're expected to be $1.50 uh, for the normalized estimate for the EPS gap, $1.46, and the revenue of $10.35 billion. And you can see that this revisions are basically 50 50 right leaning more towards the downwards revisions but still basically just 50 50. what do you think about this yeah pretty much it's kind of in lot like people don't necessarily know where it's going to go it's not necessarily like a widely covered company like others like you know like your ups your fedex right. your a BMW, for GM, right? Like those ones that are more mainstream. Uh, it has a pretty good amount of revisions, right? But it, because it's probably like how Basomatic pointed out, the one of the big companies in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it, it definitely could go somewhere, right? It's it's one of those, it's a, an interesting point right now in the company. All right. All right. So let us come back over here if my mouse decides to work let's take a look at the fundamentals for, for this thing so we got the ticket for mga market cap of 12.3 billion dollars not really a lot right it's not a it's not a, a major cap corporation and well this pe is 11.74 11.74 pe that's looking really good i mean under 20 to me it's basically amazing um, current share price, we already saw $44.04. But this is interesting. They do pay out the dividend and take this dividend as you will. This is a pretty big dividend, guys. 4.31%. Now, that would be a red flag in a way. But it's mainly because the company has fallen. And now, if we take a look at these payout ratios, at least when it comes to profits, it's 37.7, looking really good. Five-year CAGR of 5.43, seven consecutive years of dividend payment. So they were still paying out dividends through COVID and through the chip shortage as well, which did affect cars. Um, maybe not so much the car interiors, but still, you guys get my point. Maybe they were able to sell their products and didn't really affect their bottom line or even their top line because of the fact that they are not for selling the car. They're just for one specific piece of the car right so that may have something to, to do with the fact that maybe the uh COVID didn't really hit their 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 top you know their their top line or the bottom line ex dividend date passed as of um november 15th payout date will be in about two days on november 29th and they pay their dividends quarterly now one more thing to add when it comes to dividends i'm not so sure about canada but at least for the one that i own that's foreign the one company that owns that's foreign, you do have to pay a fee, like a tax, whenever you receive that dividend. I must I'm not certain. I think Canada is because when I used to have um PBA, that um that that company, um they did take away some money from my dividends because it was from Canada. So understand that the dividends that you do get will be um will be taxed to some extent in addition to the normal taxation that the United States gives you. So when you receive the dividend, you will get automatically taxed from that um, from that payment. So let's come back over here. Based off of the current shares outstanding, they pay out $545.87 million in dividends every year. In the 10-year average free cash flow, they, uh, they pay out, sorry, the 10-year the average free cash flow after this dividend is paid out, they're still left with $889 million. Now, this is looking good, but the concern is this last year's free cash flow goes down to $103.13 million. That's a massive drop. So the question is, is this a trend or is this an outlier? Hopefully, it's just an outlier, but we'll take a look at this in just one second. Now, payout ratios for these types of, uh, of free cash flows is 84.11% for the last year's payout ratio, which is not good, right? You don't want this thing to be anywhere near that 100%. And for the 10-year average, is looking good at 38.04. I look at this, I'm like, it's a 50-50. It's a red flag, but at the same time, it's like, it depends as to where the fundamentals are actually going when it comes to this. So, ready? Let's go into now the fundamentals, starting with the net income. And, uh, whoo, this is uh, looking interesting. We got 10... Yeah, it's well yeah um there may be some explanations here and there 
But Asymatic did provide a uh, an interesting explanation co coincidentally on the five year they well, changed leadership. Oh, yep. So they are current. The and CEO that made Ma um, Ma Magna um, retired five years ago. Coincidentally, is when everything started <laughs> going into the shitter. Interesting, 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 interesting. Now it was also masked with COVID, right? So he he also pointed out that it was masked about by COVID. So not everyone understands if is it leadership related or COVID related how it all turned out. Well, it's interesting because if you see here on the 10 year, we got $1.88 billion to one year ago, $1.2 billion. It was consistently increasing up until six years ago, then apparently new leadership, right? Yep. Only down to 1.77, but then it fell down to 757, but then it shot right back up to 1.5, but then it shot right back down to 5.592. So I don't, I don't know. Like this to me, it just... It's it's a fifty. It, literally, the graph is split down the middle, fifty fifty. Yeah. Right. So I I don't know what to do with this. I mean, this is a decrease of thirty six percent. If you take a look at this from the ten to six years ago, nice increasing. But then the overall trend from five to today, it's decreasing, at a pretty consistent rate. Right. So yeah. what do you think? It's it's again with the COVID and everything kind of just like you 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 split the chart into two, and you don't know necessarily which way it's going to go one way or another. If I base it off like the most recent right, and then throw it in that they had a really good six years ago, mm -hmm. it, it, to me it's like a twenty or a thirty, just because it's like you're not showing any signs of revital. You're not showing any signs of like okay, you, you had COVID, you had the singular outlier. What's the explanation for the other five years? That's true. That is true. So I was actually going to go with a 50, but for me, I'm actually going to go with a 40. I don't know what's happening with my laptop right now. It is so slow. I do not understand why. Oh my goodness. I do not understand why my laptop is so slow right now. Um, but yeah, 40% for me, 20% for you. Looking at the free cash flow, this is not good. $1.33 billion to one year ago of $650 million as a decrease of 51% with an average of $1.4 billion. I mean, increase from nine to five and then boom, instant crash. Mount Everest. It is, yeah, it's, it's basically Mount, Mount Everest here. I, this is not good. I, especially for that dividend, Great dividend yield, but I look at this and I'm like, this cash flow, it is not good, right? This cash yeah. flow is just not good. So it's it's Mount Everest. Do you want to climb Mount Everest in the morning? No, <laughs> or it's every day, 20. every day actually. Or, yeah, it's like a twenty. I I don't feel like climbing Mount Everest. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I'm gonna give this roughly around the same grade, like around like a twenty percent as well. Uh, revenue is looking pretty good, though. Um, you can see that, yeah, uh, four years ago. Okay, so it did hit their, their top line. COVID did hit their top line. But again, is it CEO-related or COVID-related, right? We yeah, got, like that's what said, you don't know. Right, so we got five years ago of $34.4 billion. Two one year ago, $42.8 billion. Increase of 24.4%. Um, increase dropped during COVID, but it, it, it did recover, right? It did recover. So what do you think? Uh, if I look at everything else, right, it, it puts into the question, is the revenue going to continue? But it has because of the chop. I'm going to say 75% just because there's some under, like anything that comes along that's another negative headwinds is going to negatively affect them, right? Sure. They're already fragile enough where they are right now. And it's, it's you don't want to have them continue being fragile. True. I'm going to go with an 80%. Uh, assets, you guys can see that the assets are increasing. So are the liabilities, though, roughly by the same kind of um, kind of thing, though. The liabilities are stagnating more on the one year to the trailing than the, than the actually, I think it's around the same. Yeah, I, I think it's, actually, no, sorry. The assets are actually stagnating more um, than the liabilities. So, I don't know. It looks roughly the same. But all in all, though, assets and liabilities, Nicely increasing, a little bit choppy here and there, but not too bad. Average assets of 26.2 billion, liabilities of 15.1 billion, difference of 11.1 billion dollars. Uh, what do you think? Not bad. I would say 80 just because of all the negative underlyings, but it's not bad. Yeah, I'm gonna go with like, like an 80. One good graph. I'm gonna go with like an 85. Yeah, yeah. Now the next one, yeah. I mean, we saw this. The, the cash flow is completely decreasing. 
obviously this is going to go down they did have instances of it going up but actually there's only been one instance of it actually increasing so oh. I, i'm not a fan of this one year ago is I'm negative hang on hang on hang on one year ago is negative 19 billion dollars the average being negative 13 billion dollars I would almost say um, 50 percent just because like if you step into negative cash flow, then you obviously just downgrade it to like a zero. But if you start having positive cash flow, considering you're literally at like the historical 10 year lows of cash flow, mm -hmm. then it could be an interesting buying point. Fair enough. That's actually a really fair point as well. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm not going to give the 50, though. I'm going to go with like a little bit less, like a 40 percent. I don't like the constant decreasing. That's my, my one issue. Now. Shares outstanding. This could be a great thing or a horrible thing because you guys can see that this is coming down. Now, they did increase it from one year ago to the trailing, but this is a massive buyback from 410.3 million shares with an M to today of 287.3 million shares. That is a buyback of almost 30%. The cat's scratching on my desk. That is a buyback of 30%. The reason why I say this is a little bit concerning is because companies that are in trouble usually tend to do a lot of... A lot Issuance. of... Uh, uh, no, not issuing. Buybacks. At the, uh, really? Yes. Like one of the things that... Um, I think it was... Hang on just one second. There we go. One of the things that companies uh, like to do is to buy back shares uh, when they're when they're um, when they're in trouble. Not all of them, but that is something that I have noticed. So I'm not saying that they are in trouble. I'm just saying that you know this. It's a red flag. It's not even a red flag. I like it, but at the same time, it's like they don't have the castle for this. Right? They yeah. do not have the castle for this, and paying out that dividend either. So one of two things has to go. Either the dividend has to go or this thing has to go. Pick one, right? Pick one. So what do you think overall? Overall, I would say 50 just because yeah. I don't know necessarily, right? It's like it's like how you just theorize like they're um, basically uh, heading downwards, right? Is it, it why, right? Well, well, it's not necessarily heading downwards, but it's like it's like they can't afford to, to do buybacks and pay out the dividend with that cash flow because remember that's what cash flow is is used for well at least two of the things that cash flow is used for paying that dividend and buying back shares mm. they can't do it with that kind of cash flow so in my personal opinion something has to go we will probably see much more of an increase um if they if they continue or that dividend will be cut that's something that could happen as well which would then cause the stock to fall even more um all in all i'm gonna give it like um like a 50%, right? So, yeah. And lastly, Cash codes they currently hold $1.1 billion with an average of $1.6 billion. Overall grade for me, it is 50%. And for you, it is 45%. Yeah. So, okay. eh, fundamentals aren't good. Um, you know, I was I was really hoping for this company, but the, if the fundamentals just aren't aren't there, right? Which um which does which does suck a little bit. Did your camera just move? Did it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Your, your camera just moved. Um, no, 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 no. On on Discord, I mean. Your camera just moved on Discord. You now have a black bar at the bottom of you. That's weird. I want to turn it on and off and see if it disappears. I guess. Nope. No, it does not. So, something happened there. I don't know. Discord's sometimes stupid. But let's now take a look at um, overall valuation. Because, guys, it has fallen a lot, especially from peak. So... Looking at valuation, uh, let's make some assumptions, shall we? Okay, so right off the bat, we can see that, um, first of all, adjusting for debt, this is going into the negatives. This is going into the negatives, right? But not adjusting for debt, it's $13.70. So let's input some, some numbers, Mike. What do you think for the revenue growth, low, median, and high assumption in the next 10 years? Well, the the revenue. Let's do like a two four six split, right? Two four so six, like yeah. If they start yeah, let's more, do two. What? Yeah, I was gonna say zero two four, but eh. I like because putting. That, you wanna know what I usually like doing for this is I like putting the the average here that we have as the median. This is something I like to do. 
right? Because mm -hmm. ideally, you want to snipe the median. Um, okay, gotcha. and then for the predicted share buyback, they've been buying back at around 4%. Uh, so what do you think? Zero, two, and four, right? To kind of, because like Bassomatic pointed out, they increased, the government allowed them to buy back more, right? They changed the rule. Oh, oh did, much, did Bassomatic say yeah. that? Yeah, and then basically uh, that means like two would be back to the standard and then zero if they, you know, how you mentioned they can't afford it anymore. So then we see how it goes. Okay. But yeah, the, 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 the returns are looking like crap. Okay, and then the recovery of the return? Let's do 8%, right? Lower like standard... than the market. Lower than the market. Yeah. Okay. Well, with this, we got $26.96 and then $56.56 with the middle of $38.95. Adjusting for debt is now 8 bucks to $27.95. You guys can see that, yeah, we're basically between the middle and the high assumption. So from a valuation perspective, this is looking interesting. Fundamentally, though, Right. Fundamentally, it's just not there. And by the way, this is with an 8%. If you increase this to 10% just to match the market, right, just to match the market, it um, we're still between, though, we are still between this, um, this median and the high assumption. So, yeah, I mean, valuation is looking like a good buy, but honestly, I don't know. Fundamentals just aren't there. You know, take it with a grain of salt, guys. Again, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. This is based off of our assumptions right here. So. Take it as you will. Take it as you will. Looking at the dividend, though, we could see that. Um, oh, not that. Sorry. Looking at the dividend, though, we could see that. Oh, I just realized I did not plan for this. Okay. We could see that putting in $6,215, this sets you a whopping $268.13 per year, which is really good. But again, the dividend might actually get cut. So, yeah, just be wary of that. And uh, with that, Mike, let's uh, take a look at the fundament or the charts really quickly when it comes to yep. Magda. Yep. And uh, right. uh, please try to make it quick because I would like to get to the bell. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. So let me put you, let me just change it back to this. Uh, what is happening? Am I, why am I being stupid right now? Chart, like your, your technical scene doesn't work. I'm gonna have to change it. I don't know what happened. But yeah, guys, uh, Magna, fundamentally not good. Valuation wise, pretty good. But I don't know. I if, if the company's fundamentals aren't there, then there's no point. There really is no point. So that pretty much does it, guys, for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help here on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investment on the Discord, which is the best place to cast the videos, live streams, and shorts. Link is in the description below for that. So with that said, I'm going to end the video right here. I'm going to have to edit it a little bit, but still, the video was recorded. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.